Well, good afternoon, Hope City Church. Today is July 5th, and I just want to tell you I'm excited to bring this, this word to you, and I've just seen some of you. I've delivered our, our goodness to you, uh, some of the, the nutrition we had for you guys, and I miss you quite a bit. Um, you'll hear some words uh, about a service. We're hoping, if everything continues, that, that on August 1st, Sunday, August 1st, will be our first uh, church service back after our break since uh, March the 8th was the last time we had service. Anyway, let's just get into the word. And uh, you, you already have your instructions over the next few weeks as to what's going to happen. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we just come before you. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness, for your love, your grace, and your mercy that endures throughout all eternity. We thank you that the Bible says that nothing can separate us from your love. Nothing can separate us from your thoughts. You're always thinking about us, the scripture says, and you're always here with us. So Lord, we thank you for those things. I pray, Father, that you would just take your word that I'm sharing. I pray that it minister to each and every person here and may it happen, uh, do, be uh, done for your glory. And uh, to draw us closer to you, I pray that you would change hearts, that we would be drawn to your presence, and that we would have a great desire right now in the place that we're at, that we may serve you and love you and show our love to you as we obey your scripture and love others, that we may spend eternity with you, increase our belief, our faith, and our trust in you. We thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, today, as I shared, these past few weeks, I've been, the Lord's been ministering to me, as he, he does all the time, but he's told me I'm going to share uh, moments from my quiet time with you. And that's where the messages have been coming from. Hopefully, when we start back, we're going to go back and finish the book of Luke when we're all together. But I believe that God told me to wait until we get back together to finish that. That's what I just kind of believe. So right now, today's word comes from Psalms chapter 2. We're going to look at the, the entire chapter. It's 12 verses in the book of Psalms. And there's a, a short word for us, a short message for us there. So if you have your Bibles, I'm going to be reading from uh, primarily the, the uh, King, New King James Version. But uh, some of the things I'm going to share are for some other versions, and I'll let you know that when we get to it. So let me open up. Psalms chapter 2, and I'm going to start verse 1. I'm going to read these 12 verses. They're very short. It says, Why do the nations and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. He shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king, I'm sorry, yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, you are my son today. I have begotten you. As for me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, at the end of the earth for your possessions, and the ends of the earth for your possessions. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them into pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth, Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are those who put their trust in him. I love this passage of scripture. And as I was preparing, studying, I, I saw things myself and I also, uh, looked and just read some, some things that others had to say. And 
I was really moved by what one uh, commentator, an old pastor, had to say on this passage. And I'm going to share quite a bit of his thoughts because they blessed me and why hide them? I believe the Holy, they were Holy Spirit inspired and I believe that they'll help as it did me, it'll help you. I was led by God as I saw this and just, this passage just stood out to me and as I began to study, I, I found out why and I want to share that with you. So I love the way this commentator lays these this these 12 verses out. He says something odd. He's, he, he says that this passage is basically taken from four points of view. And he said, he, he, he said let's, let's pretend that they're cameras. He says one is a camera in heaven. One is a camera on earth. One is a camera before the Holy Spirit. One is a camera, a camera before God the Father. One is a camera before God the Son. Let's, let's start out. Let's look at the beginning of these verses. In verse, the first three verses take it from the, the camera here on earth. What is going on with mankind? What is happening? And I love this passage because as I read this, I thought there's nothing has changed. There's, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. There's things that have happened in the very beginning. They're happening over and over again. And here we see it again, even in the times that we live with the COVID-19 pandemic, the, the recent uh, rioting, the, the, the social injustice, and even the injustice in the church. The church, the separation in the church, churches warring against each other, having words. Sometimes war even within the church. I've heard people during the pandemic, instead of getting on our knees together and, and seeking God and, 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 and asking God for direction as a church, where the church, uh, we have church members coming against their pastors saying, where's your faith? We got to open services anyway. Forget the government. Forget what the, really what the word of God says. The word of God says that you and I have to follow the rules, the laws of the land. We're not talking about the laws of the land that are telling us that we can't serve God because then that would be directly against what the Lord says. But they're telling us about us. And what if they say that we can't come together, if they say we can't do those things, I mean, in one place physically, God has shown us how we can get around it. They can't, they have to come and, and told us that we can't worship God. We just can't. There's limitations now on how we do it. And thank God we're, we're able to come back together right now. And, and even there's limitations on how we have to do it. If we have to have, we have to have extra services in order to do it, we can do that. Instead of, so instead of coming together, there's been division in the church. There's been a church that's not together on their knees seeking God because there's only one God. And that one God has one way that he wants things done. And if we seek him, We'll find those things. So let's look at this. So now we get this picture. The first three verses give us a picture of what's going on in the earth. It says, the kings of the earth set themselves. The kings of the earth, you know, I said, as I read verse one, why do the nations rage against? Why do the nations raise, rage, I'm sorry, and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord. Let me stop with these first two verses. So we have the nations. We talk about the nations. Every nation in the world coming against God. And they plot vain things. The Bible says in, in, in the Psalms, here in this, this same Psalms, it says God searches the whole earth. He's trying to find this one person who's done the right thing. And it says, sadly enough, every time I read that passage of scripture, it says, sadly enough, he, he can't find one. It lets me know that amongst the whole world, there isn't one that has not fallen short of the glory of God. It lets us know that we need to keep seeking God and pressing in to try to do the things that he wants us to do. <clears throat> it says the nations rage against, the nations rage and the people plot vain things. It says the kings of the earth, and that's the political realm, all of our nation's leaders, every nation's leaders. It says the king of the earth set themselves and the rulers, the rulers refer to the leaders, the church leaders. It says so in verse two, the kings of the earth 
that's the political leaders, and the rulers take counsel together. That means they're coming together. They're, they're coming together against what God wants. That's the, way, that's the way things are happening. We can see divided lines where certain churches have sided with certain political values, you know, certain political lines here even in America. Other churches are on the other side, and the churches are at war against each other. Again, we ought to be seeking God. And it says, and they take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. So let me take some time and let's go through this. Who, who are, the, are they taking uh, counsel against, together against? One, God the Father, that's the Lord. The second, against his anointed, that's Jesus Christ, God the Son. He said, well, Pastor, I, I, I'm having a hard time uh, believing that. Well, let's, if you want to see, uh, there are like seven places in Scripture that refer to this psalm in Psalm chapter 2. And I'm going to take you just to one of them for time's sake. That actually really helps us understand these first three verses. Uh, and we're going to go to Acts chapter 4. And we're going to start at verse 24. Acts chapter 4, verse 24. And again, I'm reading from the, the New King James Version. It says, So when they heard, so when they heard that they raised their voices with one accord and said, Lord, you are God who made the heavens and the earth and the seas and all that is in them, who by the mouth of your servant David has said, now here's, here's what we want to look at, why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things? The kings of the earth took their stands and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. So we got against the Lord God and against Jesus Christ. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. Wow. So we had these two political parties that even came together. They were at odds against each other. Herod and Pilate, we saw that back when they delivered Jesus to be crucified. And then it says, even those that, even Israel, and Israel was, were God's chosen, right? They came against him. The nations came against him. Even the Gentiles. Those who, because Israel turned their back on God, God used people like the Apostle Paul and Peter to come up and, and share the gospel with them. And many gave their life to him at this time. Many of us fall under this blessing because of the rejection of the, of, the, of the Jews, of Christ, we fall into the same blessing. He wished that none would perish, and we're part of that. It says, uh, so in verse 27, I'll read it again. Truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before, before to be done. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus, whom they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together, were shaken. Who, when they had prayed, the place where they were shaken, uh, were assembled together, had shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. So here's the disciples going back in and 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 uh, recanting what happened, even when they were being filled with the Holy Spirit, to speak the word of God boldly, with the assurance that God of the word that God told them to speak. And we have these words written down for you and I that we may, again, make it to heaven. So we have these things that I want to share. These first three verses point to 
the, the camera points at earth and it shows those who plot against God. And you might say, well, you know what? I, I'm not plotting against God. You know, I'm going to tell you, the scripture says all of sin and fallen short of the glory of God. I was thinking myself, here's the plots. God has a, a plan and a purpose for each of our lives. He has one for yours and one for mine. Some of them are very specific in what we're to do. You know, we're to go out and share the gospel, but he may say, you're going to live here and you're going to do this. This is where you're going to work. This is what you're going to drive. And many of us are like Peter was at the end after Jesus had come back and Jesus told Peter what his destiny was going to be. And Peter, as, he was, as Jesus was telling him his destiny, he looked over and he saw John. He said, well, what about him? And Jesus said, basically, you do what I tell you to do. Don't, don't worry about him. If I decide that he lives forever, he'll live forever. And sometimes we want, I want what that person wants. And we, 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 we don't want to do what God wants us to do. Now that's, the, that's one side of it. That's one person. So there's even sin in that. But then there are the other sins that, that right now that a lot of us struggle with. Even in the church today and in my church, I've got people that are dealing with uh, uh, heterosexual sin. They are in sin outside of marriage. i got people that are dealing with homosexual sin right now. They're, they're struggling right now with homosexual sin. i got people that are still stealing. i got people that are still... Uh, being in drunkenness, I got people that are still being high you know, on, on drugs and other things they're not supposed to be. I mean, it's all around us. We got people struggling with pornography. We got people struggling in the church today. And God's saying, you know, give all that up. Put it aside. Lay it, lay it aside. Lay it down. Fight the good fight. And the, the good fight is like, Lord, I want to get, I want to get rid of this. Acknowledging your sin and saying, God, I want to get rid of it. I'm not the judge. All I'm saying, you and I have to go to God. I have to do it daily. I struggle myself with things that God's saying, man, what about your anger, sin of anger? What about the things that you, uh, that your, your, your lack of discipline? Whatever it is that we're doing, God has told us to do, and we don't do it. We don't do it when he tells us to do it. In verse 3, it talks about some of these things. Let's look at verse 3 one more time. Let me read verse 3 to you again. In verse 3, here's what it says. They, here's what the people on earth said. Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. The bonds, their bonds, what are some of the bonds that are broken in pieces? Well, one of the bonds is, uh, is the bond of marriage. Today, people are, are, are doing away with it, wanting to do away with that bond of marriage. I got people telling me today and talking about why get married? Why don't I try living with the person first and seeing if I, if I, how this is going to work out? And God said, no, seek me. I got to make a help meet for you. If I want to, if I, if I plan that you get married, there's somebody I have for you. Seek me, ask me to show you who it is. Get married first, do it the right way. I have it. Uh, we, that's just one of the bonds that he's breaking. There's other bond, bands, I'm sorry, other, some of the other bands. That's, that's one of the bands that are broken. There are other bands out there too. He also says uh, the chords. And the chords are, here's the chords, the Ten Commandments. See, the Ten Commandments, uh, people will say to me, well, Pastor, that's the old, that's the law. We live in a new, a, a, a new time. We live under new salvation. Well, see, I'm not talking about salvation. He got, the Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. The Bible also says that the law was given to us as a schoolmaster. In other words, it is it's to show us our wrong and our rights. Let me, let me show you this. In Romans 5.13 it says, yes, people sinned even before the law was given, but it was not counted as sin because there was not yet any law to break. So the law shows us what sin is. It's like a sign on the freeway showing 55 miles an hour. And every time I go faster than that, and I do it, I'm breaking the law. 
In Romans 5.20 it says, God's law was given so that all people could see how sinful they were. But as people sinned more and more, God's wonderful grace became more abundant. I read both of those from the New Living Translation. And what it, I just wanted to be plain and clear that, that the law was to show us our sin. That's why the Ten Commandments. And people want to get away from those things. When the law says, I shouldn't steal. When the law says that I should love my brother as myself. When the law says I should have no other God before me. I shouldn't worship anything in heaven and on earth. God is the only person that should be worshipped. He's given all these things that we have for us to enjoy. And some, for some of us, he gets a limitation on what we can enjoy. He's told some of us we can do this. I've got this for you and others. You can do that. I remember a passage in scripture where he was talking about uh, raising up leaders. And he said some are going to be leaders of, of tens, some of hundreds, some of thousands. And I can't be a leader of ten and, 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 and in my own mind think, I need to be a leader of a thousand. You know, and God said, no, I didn't call you to do that. That's the simple that's the simple sin, one of the simple sins we, we do. But there are other sins, as I shared before, greater than that. Verses 4 to 6 focus on God's point of view. And I want to go ahead on and, and read those again really quick so you can see those. And 4 through 6, this is what it says. He who sits in heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. He shall speak to them in his wrath. And distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. So it says two things here. One, God is going to have his way. Judgment is going to come. People think they're going to get away from it. They're going to get around it. They look to God and shake their fists and go, I'm going to do my own. I'm going to do it my will. I'm going to do it my way. God says, no, you, you, you're, going to, you're not going to succeed. You're going to be judged for that in the end you're going to spend eternity in hell. That's the thing. That's just the simple thing of that. And he says, and verse 6 says, and here's what I'm going to succeed in doing. I'm going to succeed in doing it. When I render judgment, as I'm rendering judgment, Jesus will, my son Jesus, God the Son, who's always been there for all eternity, he is going to be the king forever. His throne is going to be raised up. It's going to happen. In my time, when I say it's going to happen, it's going to happen my way. He's, God already knows about all that's going on right now. It doesn't change his plan or his purpose. He's, he's not holding, coming any later than he planned to do. He's going to come. He's going to raise the throne of Jesus in his time, and he knows what the earth is going to be like at the time that he comes and raises Jesus up. Verses 7 through 10. Now, let me just tell you something as I share with verse 6. Verse 6 is so real. Verse 4 through 6, his judgment is going to come. The throne of Jesus is going to be raised up. We're going to bow down to him. Every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus is Lord. You and I simply need to get with the program. We need to get with the program now. You and I need to get with the program. We need to get with the program now. Verse 7, the focus is on Jesus. And in, in these verses, in verse 7, the scripture says, And I will declare the decrees, this is Jesus saying, the Lord has said to me, you are my son, today I have begotten you. And that begotten you is not the beginning when Jesus came into existence. That's the begotten when he was raised from the dead. It's already, things have already set his tone. It's when he was raised from the dead. You have begotten, I, I have, you, he said, I'm, let me read it again. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, in other words, Jesus is saying this. God said to me, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you to the nations for your inheritance and the end of the earth for your possession. Again, at that point in time, it'll be all Jesus. And it says, And you shall break them with the rod of iron, 
you shall dash them to pieces like the potter's vessel. People have a struggle with that sometimes. They say, well, Jesus, I thought he was a, a, the God of all peace. He was, I thought he was a peaceful guy. Sometimes in order to bring about things, there have, yeah, things have to be torn down. I can't tell you how many times God told the nation of Israel, when they go into the, the nation to take possession of it, kill everything. Burn it. Do away with it. Everything. So they can be cleansed. And there's going to be a great cleansing that's going to be taken, take place on the judgment, at that time of judgment. <clears throat> so that was 7 through 9, and now the last few are in, in ten, verses 10 through 12, and it is the voice of the Holy Spirit. The voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to all of us. I love this. Every time in Scripture, and this is one of the things that, as I was reading what this thing that this commentator had to share, I love the thing he had to share. He said, all, all throughout history, God has had a voice in some way, either by a prophet through the Holy Spirit, but normally a prophet. He sent the prophet to the leader of the nation to get them to turn and to turn their nation to do right. And this is what the Holy Spirit does with us today. And here's what the Holy Spirit is saying to you and I right now. Just as he said back when this was written, he's speaking to us right now. All scriptures given by inspiration of God proper rule for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. And the man of God may thoroughly be equipped for, for every good work. So he, the scripture, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and I right now. And this is what he says uh, in verse, this is the last few verses. Verse 10, it says, Now then you kings, act wisely. Act, act wisely. Talking to the nation's leaders, be warned, you rulers of the earth. Talking to the leaders in the church. Serve the Lord with reverent fear and rejoice with trembling. Submit to God's royal son, submit to Jesus, or he will become angry and you will be destroyed in the midst of all of your activities. For his anger flares up in an instant. But what joy for all those who take refuge in him. I read that in the New Living Translation for clarity, but let me go back and read it again in the King James just to stay consistent with what I did before. Verse 10, Now therefore be wise, O kings, be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled, kindled but a little, Blessed are those who put their trust in him. It doesn't take much for Jesus to, his wrath to, to destroy us. If the very earth was spoken into existence, how much less will, by his wrath, we be destroyed? But here's what I want you to, to, to focus. In verse 12 of the King James Version, it says, Kiss the Lord. That's give your life to Christ. That's what it refers to. Give your life to Jesus in truth. Give your life to Jesus in truth. I'm going to finish with the words of this commentator. It says this, My friend, the Spirit of God today is in the world saying to mankind, Kiss the Son before it's too late. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ before it's too late. He is coming someday. He is going to establish his kingdom here upon the earth. He is going to rule and he is going to put down all rebellion. He will bring peace, peace, and harmony to this little earth. Wow. God's going to rule. For you and I, we need to give our lives over to him right now. We need to trust in God with everything we have. Let's give our lives to Christ today. Let's be determined to give our life to him. Let's, let me pray for us that we might do it. Father, I just pray that we give our hearts over to you right now. May we go before you and ask what needs to be changed. And may we have open hearts to receive those changes and desire to make that change. Change us. Make us new. Lord, forgive us of our sin and draw us to a, a newness in you. Uh, that our lives may bear witness of you, that we may be lights on the hill, bringing glory and honor to you, drawing others to you for your glory.
Now, Lord, we thank you for these things. And I pray once more that you help this word to penetrate all of our hearts. The word of God is from you. It's from your scripture. And I thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Lord, bless you and keep you, Hope City Church and, and friends.